Innovation and creativity give Europe its competitive edge, but internet piracy and copyright infringement continues to rise. So the European Commission are preparing to publish their much-anticipated directive on intellectual property rights. So joining me here today to discuss this topic in more detail is the Dutch MEP Marike Schack from the Alliance of the Liberals and Democrats group here in the European Parliament and in fact the founder of the European Parliament's intergroup on new media. We also have the British MEP and member of the European Conservatives and Reformists, Emma McClarkin, and president of the advocacy group of the European Digital Economy, Digital Europe, Dr. Erki Ormala. And finally, we have Victoriano Darius, the legal advisor at the European Grouping and Societies of Authors and Composers. So thank you very much for joining me here today to discuss this topic. And thank you very much for watching. So without further ado, let's talk about EU. So Dr. Armel, I'd like to start with you. Um, what is Europe missing out on here without, for not having the single market online? Well, we created single market for goods 10 years ago, and that was one of the best solutions to create competitiveness for Europe and to uh, allow us to develop uh, our, our industries in Europe. But now we are moving on to the digital space. We are moving to the digital era. And now everything is moving to the Internet. Everything is being digitalized. And this space is completely national. So therefore, we can't enjoy the benefits of the single market. We have done a thorough analysis about what the digital single market would be able to create. And we have come to the conclusion that, that making digital single market reality by 2015, we would be able to increase the European GDP by 4% on an annual, in terms of annual revenue. Mr. Jack, what do you think? Um, do you think that um, music can be regulated just like any other on the internal market? Just like any other business? Well, it's about taking away barriers and not putting up more uh, regulations and rules. I think that's the essence. Uh, it's absolutely true that there is no digital European market at the moment, and that's a really uh, a lost opportunity, both economically, but also for consumers and people who would like to listen to more music, see more uh, movies. Europe has highly diverse, highly attractive cultural content, and we're simply not able to uh, distribute it and make it available to uh, our own citizens within the EU, let alone to compete with it in the European, uh, or sorry, in the global economy. And what about you, Victoriano? You're rep representing the authors here, so you're working um, closely with MEPs and commissioners. When do you think this directive will be will be through, and what do you expect from it? Well, uh, the directive actually it's a directive on collective management. It's not a general directive on, on uh, intellectual property rights. It's it's more specific. Uh, our expectation is that uh, the uh, draft directive is going to come out uh, mid July, uh, late summer. And our expectations is that uh, we are able to find a solution that works well for um, what. Well, uh, primarily for our members, for our rights holders, and also, uh, very importantly, for users. Uh, we have seen um, um, that uh, for the last, uh, let's say, six, seven years, uh, the situation regarding the collective cross-border management of rights has um, been in a framework of tremendous uh, legal uncertainty since 2004, where we were able, until that time, we were able to grant licenses uh, in one single entry point for the world repertoire and for worldwide exploitations. Since then, due to a series of, um, uh, of commission uh, interventions, uh, some of them even contradictory, uh, we've seen that uh, the legal uh, framework has been uh, tremendously uh, uh, uncertain. And we hope that uh, with the new directive, we will be able to find a solution that it's uh, workable for rights holders and also for the different types of users, um, mm -hmm. some of which have different interests. And what do you think, Ms. Green, do you agree? Um, I think uh, when it comes to collecting societies, what we need to make sure is that they are transparent and uh, that they have good governance because all, uh, artists and authors need to be supported and the best way that we can deliver that is by having that transparent and good governance amongst the collecting societies. But uh, you're absolutely right about the digital market online and the single market and the completion of that is really about having the completed single market online as part of it. And so it's absolutely key in everything that happens online now, we need to be uh, more aware of how that is affecting not only businesses and the opportunities it affords businesses, but also the creative and cultural industries as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what about the language issue? Has anyone an opinion on that? Do you think English will dominate this market? No, I don't think so. It's, it's, the cultural diversity is the asset in Europe. And we have 
rich content, we have rich cultural uh, production in Europe, and all the different languages, they are just in increasing this opportunity. So I don't see that as, 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 an, as, an, as, a, as a problem at all. But how can we secure this cultural diversity? Well, it's actually being hampered right now because uh, it's very difficult for, let's say, uh, uh, a viewer in Italy to watch uh, a Swedish uh, art house movie, for example, because the rights in the countries are different mm -hmm. and it means that there's no automatic access for everyone in Europe. So I think it's an opportunity for more diversity if the monopolies of these rights holders would be broken through so that there would be a harmonization of uh, the rights management on the European level and that access to the diversity can actually be enabled and thereby preserved because if there's no audiences, uh, then it's really uh, a shame that some of these uh, movies or music or other content are, are not even viewed at all. Well, I think that there are three basic pillars that we should address. The first one is, is, is indeed this licensing practice. There should be a European-wide opportunity of providing uh, access to the, uh, to the content. But we don't want to build monopolies. There must be a variety of different licensed organizations so that there can be competition and all the artists have an access to a, an appropriate licensing organization. Secondly, the important thing is to, to, to indeed to improve the trans transparency and the efficiency of the current system because nowadays it's, it's the artists who are suffering, mm -hmm. not gaining their rights, uh, right revenues. And thirdly, which is equally important, is the question about the corporate levies. Because currently we have a system which is completely outdated. It's obsolete. Mm -hmm. It's hampering the European consumers. It's hampering the European digital licensing industries. And it's hampering ultimately the artists themselves because it creates an uncertainty among the consumers. They really don't know what to, how to behave in the current system. And when we are moving into this online distribution, so we basically have to adapt, we have to change our existing system. We have to understand that the old models are not sustainable in these new conditions, and therefore we have to change the system. If we just think about the online distribution, if we think about the cloud computing, everything is changing. So therefore we have to adapt, we have to address all these different elements because they are the important building blocks of this new digital industry. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And also in a global economy. I mean, let's not forget, while we're trying to solve these intra-European uh, barriers and take them out of the way, create more choice, uh, more options, more competition, um, more revenue for artists, but also uh, more opportunities for small, medium-sized uh, enterprises and large corporations to settle uh, in Europe and, and to make a business here. We have to understand that every minute that we wait, uh, other global players like the United States or other upcoming markets are taking parts of our market potential and that's that's a real problem i mean uh, you've spoken about the uh, economic loss the opportunity cost of not reforming and i think that that's something very important to keep in mind as well and what about the management of author societies does anyone have a, an opinion on that yes i mean uh, one uh, point was uh, raised before the issue of transparency and governance yeah. i mean absolutely we absolutely agree on that uh, we have worked uh, on self regulation uh, at our umbrella um, at our sister umbrella organizations, is that we have professional rules for uh, different kind of societies, musical societies, mm -hmm. which are quite, quite, um, quite tough. And also, we have worked with uh, part of our members, with publishers. We have a common declaration with ICMP, the uh, the advocacy group of uh, music publishers, on introducing uh, transparency and governance. And we're ready to discuss any issue in transparency and governance to the benefit of our rights holders, because that's. That's the key, and uh, this leads me to the second point, uh, competition. Competition, yes, absolutely, as much competition as possible. But when we talk about competition, the, there's usually a confusion here. We're totally in favour of competition for rights holders, but this is uh, uh, in conflict with competition for users. If you're a very good society uh, to the benefit of rights holders, you're not a very good uh, society for users because you, you want to preserve their, uh, their interests, you want to collect as high royalties as possible for the... Uh, uh, applying the uh, uh, the lowest uh, administration fee. I think you mentioned that. Let's just bring in a few um, opinions from the public there and find out what people out there think about illegal downloading and how they think that artists should get paid. Let's take a look at this clip.
think it's great that um, that music and film is more readily available for consumers at the moment and that um, they have really good access to it. But I think there's still a question over how artists and filmmakers can get paid. Another way to pay musicians would be to have internet service providers pay a tax. Small tax on the buying of um, CDs and, uh, and, and blank recording material. What? In that clip, um, the last guy said that we should put a small tax on um, blank tapes and CDs, so when you buy that, um, I think you, you agree with this, don't you, Dr. Amela? Well, it's very difficult to agree that we don't think that taxes are usually the right solution to these kinds of problems, because we, we believe that in the online world, we have the ability to track exactly what is happening in the marketplace. We know exactly what kind of music has been downloaded, where, when, and how the compensation should be allocated to the right holders. So we have in technology available the possibility of compensating exactly the right way for those who are entitled for this compensation. So therefore, taxes are always arbitrary. I do agree. I don't think taxis are the way forward. I think people are, are downloading uh, music and it's not going on tapes and CDs like it used to. I think it's mm -hmm. going on MP3 players and, and illegal file sharing is a major problem for the digital music market. Mm -hmm. And we need to therefore make sure that artists and, and rights holders have the adequate legal tools that they need in order to enforce their rights. Um, so I think that we need to make, beef up our enforcement um, on infringements and illegal file sharing and downloading. Mm -hmm. Well, I think we have to make sure that there's more uh, choice for consumers because, in a way, you could say that uh, the amount of uh, downloads of, of uncovered materials also is a testimony of an unmet demand on the part of the consumer. They would like to have more choice, and we should enable that. And mm -hmm. if there's more, more choice, the prices will also go down, mm -hmm. and it will be possible for each user to, uh, to pay uh, according to his or her use. So it should be a more fair and balanced system. And at this point, just to give you an example, that's not the case. If you look at, for example, just the Belgian uh, Collective Rights Society, they still have 160 million euros that they have not been able to, uh, to let flow back to the artist. So there's a lot of money that is uh, hiding somewhere that's intransparently kept. No one knows how or who it should be uh, distributed to, and this is a real problem. I believe that we need to focus on the fact that it is an illegal act, and people need to be educated in the value of the cultural and creative industries and the music industry in, and in their creativity, mm -hmm. and there needs to be a reward for that, and people have to understand this is an illegal act when you are doing this. It's not mm -hmm. just because, oh, because it's free, mm -hmm. I should be able to do it. Mm -hmm. it's, it. It's actually having a very detrimental effect mm -hmm on the music industry and on the creative industries. But I think and people need to have the, 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 they need to have that link in their mind that actually that illegal act is depriving them of the cultural diversity that people claim that we need to re-inject now. Um, we have so a choice now to, to focus on enforcement, which uh, you are uh, you know, uh, promoting and many people are, or reforming. Mm -hmm. Because the more we enforce an existing system, the more difficult it becomes to reform. And I think that this reform, for a variety of reasons, is absolutely necessary at this point. So instead of focusing on enforcing an outdated system, which is difficult to enforce, if not impossible to enforce, and uh, is outdated in and of itself, let's look at a new system based on those principles where indeed creation should be rewarded. Uh, nobody will dispute that. It's very important that artists get their fair share, uh, and they don't always in the old system, but also that consumers have a choice, businesses have an opportunity, and that our European cultural diversity, which makes us one of the richest places in the world, can actually be, uh, be um, marketed and sold across across the globe. I'm pretty sure that, that the existing arbitrary compensation system is one of the reasons for the increase of piracy. So that if we would have a more transparent system, if we would have a fair compensation, it would be a win-win-win scenario. Exactly. It would be good for the consumers, it would be good for the artists, and it would be good for the industry. That everybody would win if we have a new system that will allow a fair compensation to the artist, would expand the opportunity for consumers to enjoy rich experiences, and that would allow the industry to build comp comp competitive uh, sort of offerings in the European space, mm -hmm. not just leaving the European as a distribution market for American or Chinese players exactly. who are currently taking over so that the whole value of the digital space is moving out of Europe. OK, I'm afraid we'll have to leave it at there. I'm really sorry, we're just about to get in. But thank you very much to my esteemed guests for joining me here today.
Do continue this debate um, underneath this video on YouTube or send us an email to video at eu observer.com. But for the moment, that's all from us here. Thank you.